Today we are going to discuss the Joint Commission. The Joint Commission, otherwise known as TJC, is the most prominently known healthcare accreditor in the United States. The Joint Commission works actively within the healthcare community to make constant improvements on quality and safety of patient care. The Joint Commission was founded in 1951 and is the longest standing accrediting body in the United States, merging the hospital standardization program with similar programs run by the American College of Physicians, the American Hospital Association, the American Medical Association, and the Canadian Medical Association. Its full name is the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations and is often abbreviated as JCO. So to clarify, the Joint Commission, JCO, and TJC are all interchangeable. To understand the purpose of the Joint Commission's existence, it is important to quickly review their mission statement. Per their website, the mission statement of the Joint Commission reads, quote, to continuously improve health care for the public in collaboration with other stakeholders by evaluating healthcare organizations and inspiring them to excel in providing safe and effective care of the highest quality and value, end quote. The Joint Commission is governed internally by a well-rounded board of commissioners made up of 21 members of varying backgrounds in the healthcare industry. These backgrounds vary from physicians, administrators, nurses, quality experts, and consumer advocates. As for authority over hospitals, the Joint Commission was granted DEEM status by Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in 2009. This means that all Joint Commission accredited facilities meet Medicare conditions of participation. This is an excellent thing because it cuts down on the duplicative surveys that once were, making it so that CMS does not have to survey Joint Commission accredited facilities with the same frequency as they once used to. The Joint Commission acts to inspire improvement in quality of care and patient safety evaluating practices of respective organizations and facilities through surveys and providing resources to organization and facilities to become survey ready with the intent that the organizations will maintain survey readiness at all times. The accreditation process for facilities can be viewed as rather tedious to prepare for. Maintaining accreditation For facilities maintaining accreditation, the Joint Commission performs unannounced surveys for organizations every three years with a survey window of between 18 and 36 months after their last survey. Surveys typically will last anywhere between two and five days, and facilities who successfully complete the survey are granted the Joint Commission's gold seal of approval. Surveys are carried out by employees of the Joint Commission who are current or former healthcare workers of varying disciplines. These employees travel to individual facilities to carry out an unbiased review of practices. Surveyors actively look for evidence that standards are being met. They do this by taking measures such as following facility staff or shadowing facility staff asking questions, and reviewing randomized documentation. Public reporting is important because it allows consumers and potential employees to identify which organizations are meeting the latest and greatest in quality and safety standards. The reported data is, however, limited, with JACO only reporting on whether or not a facility is accredited and the safety and quality initiatives that have been met. The public can access these reports at www.qualitycheck.com. 
An important aspect of the Joint Commission is the development of standards. Standards are developed by health experts. New standards are heavily researched by these experts and are reviewed and approved by board commissioners who only will create and add new standards if there is explicit evidence that it improves patient safety and or quality of care. When new standards are created, accredited organizations are notified and given guidance on how to adhere to these new standards. To get a better idea of the standards that the Joint Commission sets, it is important to review what the Joint Commission is currently looking for in 2022. The Joint Commission is looking for whether or not staff identify patients correctly using two identifiers. They're looking for improved staff communication, which would be evidenced by important test results getting to the right staff person on time. Using medication safely is also a very important thing to the Joint Commission, as it should be everyone involved in patient care. Medications being used safely would be evidenced by labeling medications that are not already labeled before leaving the med room, taking extra precautions with patients who are using blood thinners, and correctly documenting patient medications. Additionally, the Joint Commission would like to see patients educated on, medica on their medications and encouraging patients to be active participants in their own care by keeping their own medication list for their own record and to provide to doctors when they have doctor's appointments. Another initiative is using alarms safely. This can be done by ensuring that alarms are not just going off for no reason. They are going off when they truly need attention and are being attended to when they do go off. I can see why this would be very important as alarm fatigue is definitely an issue in today's hospital settings. Another important initiative that the Joint Commission has is preventing infection, um, which can be which is done by the oldest way in the book, hand hygiene. Next, identifying safety risks by taking measures to reduce suicide risk, whether this be by cognitive assessment or by making the facility itself safer for patients. Lastly, and certainly not least, preventing mistakes during surgery by doing things such as marking the correct place on a patient's body, identifying the patient, like we had previously mentioned, as well as taking a pause to coordinate with the surgical team to ensure that mistakes are not being made in the operating room. An example of one of these mistakes would be wrong, a wrong side surgery, which is known as a sentinel event by the Joint Commission. A sentinel event is something that should never happen, also known as never events. The Joint Commission has impact on healthcare organizations, nursing practice, and patient care alike. First, let's look at how it has impact on healthcare organizations. First, healthcare organizations can utilize Joint Commission standards to draft their policies. This allows facilities to create a standard of care that is intended to decrease risk of errors and also adds the added benefit of keeping facilities prepared for a survey at all times. Reputation. The Joint Commission accreditation is a symbol of quality that proves organizations are making active commitments to achieve and sustain high standard of quality and safety for patients. A Joint Commission accredited facility will attract both new staff and patients alike. Another way that the Joint Commission has impact on organizations is reimbursement. Depending on location, Joint Commission accreditation is a standard that must be met for a facility to be reimbursed for care. These are just a few ways that the Joint Commission has impact on organizations. 
I'm sure there are many more. The Joint Com Commission also has an impact on nursing practice. For example, evidence-based quality safety measures. A great example of this would be the catheter-associated urinary tract infection quality issues that required nurses to change how they think about catheter orders, encouraging nurses to question possible inappropriate orders. It also impacted nursing practice. Another example would be, a great example would be the recommended Speak Up campaign, which has been, I have personally seen in several hospital sit settings that I have worked in. This Speak Up campaign encourages healthcare staff to report problems or near misses without fear of retaliation. That way, a facility can go, go about a root cause analysis and figure out why the problem happened in the first place to prevent it from actually happening if it didn't happen or to prevent it from happening again if it did. One error is always too many. The Joint Commission also has the, as previously mentioned, has impact on patient care. First and most importantly, safer care. An organization that follows Joint Commission standards is less likely to cause harmful errors during a patient's hospital stay due to the constant adherence to Joint Commission standards. The Joint Commission also, this can also be applied to nursing practice as well, encourages patients to be active participants with their, in their own care and also encourages us as nurses to inspire patients to become, the, become active participants in their care. Patients who participate in their own care, such as asking questions regarding their medications or asking providers if they have washed their hands before being seen, is shown to improve provider adherence to safety practices. It would be remiss if I didn't mention that hospitals can achieve more than just a gold seal of approval. Hospitals that look to go above and beyond can obtain many different certifications provided by the Joint Commission. These include, but are not limited to, stroke certification, cardiac, and orthopedic certifications. There are many other certifications that a hospital may obtain as well, and information can be found on the Joint Commission website. Also, bear in mind that there are many different certifications depending on the type of facility being run, whether it be a nursing home, home care agency, or hospital. In conclusion, although a Joint Commission survey and preparing for a Joint Commission survey can be te tedious to staff. The Joint Commission is very important to our overall healthcare system. It is important to have checks and balances on quality and safety in the care that we provide our patients.